Welcome to another edition of Talk Nerdy to Me. I am your host, Troy Stegner, and I have one of the pioneers of the underground comics movement here on the line with me, Mr. Larry Wells. How are you doing this morning, Larry? Pretty well. How are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Uh, I know you got into comics really early in California. Uh, when was your, what was your first comic you remember? The first comic that was uh, published was a... Uh, uh, a small, just a single strip in uh, Yellow Dog when it was still a tabloid. I think the last tabloid of Yellow Dog. And uh, what character? Or, was it an ongoing strip? I don't even remember what that one was, but then the first uh, <laughs> story that I did was in Yellow Dog when it was a comic. And that was, uh, what was that? That was that Joe Bad? No, that was Garbage Man. The Garbage Man is a superhero. Which we need right now. Yeah, right. I did. Oh, and I, I guess I should mention I have uh, your wife online also. Uh, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sharon Wells, Larry's <laughs> sidekick and whip. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody will know when they hear your, your voice in the background, they won't think he's uh, impersonating anyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, I know as you mentioned uh, Cherry. You want to tell me how you got started with Cherry Pop Tart? Well, it was uh, an idea that I had kicking around that uh, actually was uh, waiting for somebody else to do it because we were, we were doing underground comics and uh, we were being rude and, uh, you know, uh, derisive of, uh, well, everything, <laughs> and especially in comics and stuff. And uh, it, uh, I was, uh, I, I grew up on, on mad. Uh, Mad Magazine and Mad Comics, you know, I, I didn't even, I was reading the uh, Mad uh, reprints of the comics in the digest form, Mad Paperbacks, we called them. I didn't even realize what they were, but that totally influenced me, you know, that the line, whole attitude towards it, everything, of, uh, you know, parodying things. And so it, it seemed like an obvious thing to me to uh, take the uh, Archie comics, so that actually the whole genre, the wacky teen comics, at that point, every, uh, comic company had a, a wacky teen title of some sort, you know, Millie the Model and Marvel, and uh, so there was a bunch of, yeah. anyway, yeah, uh, so I thought that, I actually, I really was literally waiting for somebody else to do it, because it seemed so obvious, and so I, I finally just put it together and uh, put some stuff, and it was uh, thinking, uh, well, I have, an, I have an idea for a comic that it would go something like this, and it would have stories like this, only better. You know, and be or look like this. It looked just like an Archie comic from the outside, and uh, to where he could slip it on a rack, and uh, and he would think it was an Archie comic. <laughs> I was actually hanging out with Dan O'Neill and the Air Pirates at the point. At, at that point, and there was uh, that was sort of the strategy that they were doing. You know, doing that anyway. Uh, and so I just did it as a as a one off. You know, I did they made you know, call it number one just as a joke. And then I went back to, uh, you know, starving as an artist and trying to sell humorous illustration until uh, Ron Turner met me at a, a seminar that I was doing about selling humorous illustration. And he said, what are you doing here? Uh, do some more comics. It's actually selling. I said, okay, and I did some more comics. And that was in uh, around 80, early 80s, 81, 82. Do you know, happen to remember how big the print run was on that first Cherry Pop Tart? Because I don't think I've ever seen a number one floating around in the wild anymore. It was, it was ten thousand. There, there. Yeah, books were generally done in runs of ten thousand at that point. And so the first run was ten thousand. And uh, then uh, after some subsequent runs, we actually changed it because uh, Larry Todd had done a story in there that was actually a direct parody of Archie and the Archie characters, you know, Junkhead and uh, you know, Vampironica. We did Vampironica, which is really ironic because. Uh, now Archie is actually doing a Vampironica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, then, so we took it out of, uh, of subsequent printings. And so, uh, and uh, that, but, uh, uh, the strip in there that I had done in, in Bakersfield comics, country comics. And uh, so then they're, they're, you can definitely tell which ones are the first run. So the first, first 10,000 are worth, a lot more than the other ones. Yeah, they've sold up to one hundred and fifty dollars each. Wow, right. pro pro collector's tip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, 
Now, uh, I know you said you were you were doing some other jobs. I actually read you were a carnival ride painter at one point. Uh, <laughs> what does that entail? <laughs> uh, a lot of hard work, actually. Uh, that was I did that for over thirty years. Yes, uh, here and there, everywhere, all over the place. I was a honorary carney on the lots and midways and at the LA County Fair for many years. And uh, uh, as um, yeah, uh, actually, as a, a friend that I met in uh, Santa Rosa, as a, he was a friend of Ron Turner's. And he said, well, if you're moving up to Santa Rosa from San Francisco, which I was living at the time, uh, actually in Marine County. Anyway, uh, he said, well, you got to meet my friend, you know, Greg Duncan, who uh, was doing carnival rides at that point. And it was, it was mostly uh, uh, what they call back-end pieces, the ones at the back, uh, the attractions, uh, fun houses, mirror mazes, and dark rides. And uh, it's uh, that all pulled out of a uh, 40-foot truck trailer. You know, like a pop-up book with hydraulics, and uh, uh, it uh, so it's a forty-foot truck trailer, with twenty-foot flaps on either side, which made it like eighty feet, and then twenty feet up up on top there, sheet metal, and we painted on them with uh, one-shot sign paints, which is solvent oil-based paints. You know, and so we're uh, cleaning our brushes and stuff with deadly solvents <laughs> year after year. <laughs> And climbing up and down on the scaffolding and ladders and stuff, and uh, applying a lot of paint, doing this stuff that uh, it was uh, it was kind of uh, it's kind of liberating in a way because it didn't matter what you did, you know, it didn't have to be great; it just had to be bright and colorful and attractive. So we could, you know, I didn't. You know, there wasn't a lot of pressure to do great art because it was, you know, it was literally a full card, right? I, Art for the masses, and stuff. but I got some some chops down and painting and stuff, and doing uh, backgrounds and scenery and stuff like that, which I've you know done later on. Now I've done scene stage scene painting a lot, but uh, uh, yeah, and we did it for years and years uh, all over the place, and uh, it's a lot of hard work, and uh, it was uh, it was kind of it's kind of fun to uh, drive down the road and see your stuff. Uh, in a parking lot at the at the mall. <laughs> so anybody who's gone to any carnivals uh, in their life, they may have inadvertently seen some of your artwork. Oh, yeah. Yep, they may have. There were a bunch of them all over, exactly. all over the place. Terry Pop-Tart is probably your most famous character, um, but there was another one that I, I've seen mentioned quite a bit. It was Captain Guts, and I think he predates yes. Cherry. Yeah, that was uh, I was doing that... Uh, I see. Yeah, before I even got published, I did it in the, in the back of uh, of class <laughs> in uh, high school. Uh, I was drawing comics in, uh, in history class, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I did uh, a few of them. They were really, really, really terrible. But then at one point in uh, when it was at seventy, about seventy one or something. Anyway, I went to I uh, hitchhiked across. I was. It was in San Francisco, and I hitchhiked across the bay to uh, Berkeley, went up Telegraph Avenue to uh, Moe's Books, and the back of Moe's Books on Telegraph there was uh, the print mint where uh, Alice Schenker was uh, selling posters and prints and stuff, and uh, I uh, showed her my pile of, uh, of a resort there, and she said, I'll show, I'll show them to my husband, it was Don Schenker, and then uh, he did, and he called me later on, and uh, that they were going to do it, and and he was uh, doing Yellow Dog at that point, and that and then I uh, did some stuff for Yellow Dog, you know, while that was being uh, ready for publication, and uh, yeah, and that was the idea was uh, Captain Guts was a uh, well, he's a, just a nebbish kind of guy who uh, when he drank a beer he turned into a, a superhero and went on beat up hippies, you know, and he had a crew cut and stuff. <laughs> The idea being that uh, I read all of the superhero comics. I never bought any of them, but I would have spent a lot of time at the spinner rack at the drugstore uh, reading all this stuff. And at that point in history, uh, the comics were terrible, and the, the superheroes were really boring characters, you know, and the, the villains were more interesting. You know? So uh, that was on that sort of premise that the, the villains were <laughs> the interesting part. 
And and again, it was in the tradition of, of mad comics. It was, it was Harvey Kurtzman. Har- Harvey Kurtzman made me do it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh right. Yeah. And uh, when it, I was uh, living uh, with a bunch of other people from Bakersfield, that's where I'm from, in uh, a house on uh, Bay Street in Upper Noy Valley in San Francisco. And one day, Don Schenker came up to my house and knocked on the door there, and uh, and this uh, skinny, weird guy. Uh, Next to him, I, I handed me a, a parcel wrapped in brown paper, and it was my comic book, and it was Robert Crumb. And I came up and showed him my drawing table and everything. He and said, "Oh yeah, I should probably do yoga." And he pointed my drawing board and said, "Oh, that's your yoga there." And uh, of course, he denies that uh, even remembering that even happening. He doesn't, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and, but anyway, yeah, and then that's uh, that's one of my the first comic book that got to me. Seventies were an interesting time, so I can imagine he probably doesn't. Yes, they were. <laughs> uh, you mentioned you're you know you're from the Bakersfield area there, and uh, you know you lived around San Francisco for a while. Then you moved to Roswell, New Mexico, of all places. What? what yeah. What, how did you get your sights set on uh, the landing site for Roswell there in New Mexico? Well, yeah, that was it. There was a, a landing site there. There was a, where you met this guy uh, in uh, Marin County, in California. There, uh, this crazy guy who was uh, selling BMW motorcycles in Sausalito or something. And he, uh, his parents lived there, and he had an idea of, of getting a bunch of people out there and uh, starting a you know, quote artist colony unquote. And uh, he was an idiot, but uh, but it's, uh, but he actually talked somebody into buying a, a, some uh, duplexes, a quadplex, a, a four point uh, four place uh, apartments there, right on the Hondo River and uh, Roswell there. And so there was a place for us to to land, uh, you know, to stay. We had two of them, and they were really small things. You know, and my studio in one, and we lived in the other. And, and it just uh, seemed like a good idea. And we were tired of, uh, we were living in Santa Rosa at the time and uh, in the heart of the wine country. And it was starting to get crowded, more crowded and more expensive every day. And, uh, and it figured, well, with, you know, being so uh, wonderfully successful with my comics and everything, it didn't matter where I lived. I could sell it because they were selling all over the world. And um, so, uh, didn't matter. It didn't matter. That was more central anyway. And, uh, so I moved there, and then the uh, whole comic industry went into free fall and imploded, and <laughs> I got stuck there. <laughs> okay, I know you're, you're self-publishing. Uh, I mean, you took a hiatus for a while from the comics, but uh, now recently, I think you just came out uh, with the new Cherry Pop-Tart comics. Um, yes, I did. Uh, and can you tell us how you've updated her for present times? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, well, it's been uh, the last one I did was when I moved to Roswell and uh, was in '95 or so, and I was still doing a few comics. But I did the last one in uh, 2000, and uh, that was uh, the uh, did the alien abduction slash X Files story. Because moving to Roswell, you know, I had to do that, <laughs> and uh, it was an actual 20-page uh, uh, story arc in that one. You know, before that, it was like eight or 10 page stories, like, like Archie comics, you know, but, uh, so now it's been 20 years. And, uh, so what I've done is, uh, have her, she's, uh, just got back from outer space where the aliens have, uh, given her powers, including, uh, the ability to, uh, step through portals in time and space. And so she, uh, jumps, uh, 20 years into her future and, uh, where she runs into her, uh, kid sister, Cinnamon Pop Tart, who was you know, uh, introduced before, but there was some question as to whether she really existed or not, <laughs> it being underage. But uh, anyway, uh, so now uh, Cinnamon is has just turned eighteen. So Cherry's always just turned eighteen, and so this way and she goes into the future and she's still just turned eighteen. And uh, so she and her friends, uh, Patty Mills and Lucas uh, and uh, LED, have. Uh, jumped 20 years into their, their future and are meeting her counterpart or, you know, they see she's her, but, uh, 
it, uh, now now in 20 years. And so now uh, Cinema and her friends have to explain to Cherry and her friends all the things that uh, didn't exist 20 years ago, you know, like, uh, you know, smartphones and <laughs> Facebook <laughs> and uh, social media and all that stuff. And so, uh, and then and she's, uh, uh, so she's uh, the uh, love goddess. So you have to figure out what that job description is. And uh, but it has something to do with the, uh, Taking down the uh, uh, the current uh, administration and, uh, and making everything better and uh, inciting a revolution, but doing it with love and sex. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, but uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> with you bringing back Cherry, uh, are there plans to bring back any of your other prior characters? Captain Guts seems to be in there, and uh, he seems to be uh, uh, an assassin uh, that's been hired by the government to kill her. <laughs> and actually, in one of the previous days, there was a uh, thing. Oh, well, she did some time traveling back to you know a Back to the Future parody thing, where she went back to the moment of her conception uh, that had something to do with her her mother uh, <laughs> uh, entertaining uh, uh, five different uh, people in the back seat of a uh, '57 Chevy. And so, and one of them was Captain Gus, so he may or may not be her father. <laughs> sort of like my mom. <laughs> I like the crossover so there. Uh, where, where can people get these the new Cherry comics? Order them online. Uh, you can order website. them online on our website. And and there's a few stores that have it now, but not a whole lot yet. And, and what, uh, look, can you tell her by the website? It's uh, with an X, dot com. Right, because I think right now you're self-published, so that's going to be basically their main avenue right. to, to get these comics. Right. right. Or to come exactly. see you at a con like El Paso Comic Con. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I wanted to thank you for taking time out of your day to, to answer all my, my silly little questions. And, uh, okay, that's just, great. <laughs> I just have one more question. It's more of a serious nature. And okay. uh, I ask this of everybody that I interview. And... Uh, I have no other way to pose it, but just to straight out ask it. And the question is, cake or pie? Cake. <laughs> cake. Is that for both of you? No, I would eat pie first. Oh. So we have we have people of different teams there, cake and pie. Most yeah, people yeah, do right. pick well, pie, so I, I was surprised yeah. with the cake okay. answer. <laughs> oh, no, he's a chocolate person, so he... You know, not very many pies are chocolate, chocolate. Yeah, know? the pie, if it's chocolate, yeah. Yeah, yeah if it's chocolate, <laughs> he'll eat the, the pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I wanted to thank you for uh, taking the time out to do this little interview, and we're all looking forward to seeing you in the new Cherry Pop-Tart comics at El Paso Comic-Con. All right. Okay. See you there. All right. I'll see all right. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or read? What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.